I go into the break room the other day. There's this kid in there I know. So I'm like, hey, bro, what's going on? Uh. He's like, oh, nothing. I'm just reading about how to have a baby. I'm like, you haven't figured that out by now? He says, no. He goes, me and blah, 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 we've been trying to have a baby for a while now. And I don't know. It's not working. I said, oh, okay. I struggled with the same thing when I had my son. Oh, yeah. Let me t let me t tell you people out there right now, especially the women out there that want to have kids. The second you sit down like it's a fucking board meeting... Okay, I think the time is right to have children now. You're lost. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Fuck like rabbits. Good luck with that one. I hate... Listen, women are so dumb. I They, they really are. They gotta sit... They gotta plan everything out. Everything's a big... Everything's a big plan. Yeah, well, guess what? That's not how biology works. My God. We're sitting there. We're fucking like rabbits. Okay? And I'm an older man now. You understand? I had, I had my son at... 40? Which is a huge mistake. Never have a kid when you're 40 years old. I'm sorry. The prime time to have a child is for a man... Once you hit 30, perfect. Perfect. Live out your 20s, and then once you have 30, when you, once you hit 30, have your kid. Oh, yeah. Well, when you hit 40, I'm like trying to chase this kid around. I'm shot. I'm like, listen, I went to fucking Peter Luger's last night, all right? I had, I had a steak that looked like it could tip over a car. Do you understand? And Jack Daniels, this guy, I sit to the bartender. Listen, Peter Luger's a pretty high-end restaurant, right? You couldn't tell by walking in there. I said, hey, buddy, pour me a Jack and Coke. He takes a fucking water glass like this, fills it with ice, three-quarters of the way Jack and Coke, takes a brand-new bottle, glass bottle of Coca-Cola. I was like, wow, I'm in for a treat. Cracks it open. He's like, splash. Takes the bottle. Doosh, right into the trash can. I couldn't believe what I saw. <laughs> it was like two drops of Coca-Cola and the, he fired the fucking, the bottle right into the garbage can. I was like, hey. When in Rome. Anyhow. I drank, we're waiting on our table, which took forever. I drank three of those sitting there. And then when we got to the table... I drank another one. I was fucking bummed. Bummed. And I knew I knew I was bummed. It was one moment that hit me where we were having a conversation and I said bloody tampon and I must have been pretty loud and I saw half the fucking restaurant go like this. <gasps> And I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting there like, and my, and my wife looks at me and she's like, are you kidding me? And I was like, oh, I started to like do the calculations in my head. You know, you're like, uh, main computer, what just happened? And it's like, oh, horror is in there. Uh, yeah, you just blurted out something really stupid because you're hammered. Like, okay, uh, let's back off the warp drive. And then I kind of like sobered up for a second there. And I was like, uh, I think, I think that's, I, this is what I said exactly. I think I said something I wasn't supposed to say. <laughs> I fucking drunk off my ass. Oh, you kidding me? They're bringing out bacon. They're bringing out fucking, I love it. The menu's great. Steak for one, steak for two, steak for three, steak for four, or get the fuck out. I did, this is the greatest menu I ever saw in my life. We get steak for four. We're there with four. I'm there with my sister-in-law, right? We get steak for four. And these three eat like birds. 
And next thing you know, there's like a whole pile of meat on the plate. They're like, uh, um, no, the, I, I see, I see everybody kind of stop eating. Like, you know, I hate, listen, just bring me my own steak on my own plate. I got to sit here and share because I, I'm a good guy. I'll only take a little bit. That way everybody else can have a lot. Yeah, that's the kind of dummy I am. And usually it's like the vultures swoop in, especially in my family. And I'm sitting there with a bowl, an empty bowl like, ting, 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 ting. And starving to death. Well, in this rarest of rare occasions, there's a huge pile of meat on the plate. And I'm looking around like, nobody's going to eat this? I'm like, you guys are good? Like, we're good. And I was like, Burr! oh my God. Terrific. I polished off everything. There was strips of bacon, one inch, one inch thick fucking bacon they brought to the table. Oh my God. Eating like a king. Eating like a king. And it made me think, you ever eat a really good meal and you say to yourself, man, did people from the past ever eat like this? I mean, let's face it. It's a fucking steak, right? They've had steak forever. But did they really know how to prepare it like this back then? Like, the, this steakhouse opened in 1887. And I'm thinking to myself, 1887? Oh, my God. We're talking gas lights, right? I mean, what? Top hat? I did, wait, wait, it was just after Civil War, for Christ's sake. Civil War ended what, 1965? Just after Civil War. And then it made me think, what about kings? What must have it been like to be a king? Did kings eat like this every day? I'm sure a king had meals like this. I'm talking about medieval times, baby. It's like, what must it have been like to be a king? You know? I just eat a meal like that every night. Oh, I'd be such a fat fuck. I'd be the fattest king in the land. You get done eating that savory steak. And then it's like, okay, where's the court jester? I, I, let me tell you something right now. I'd have court. I'd be going through court jesters. Like, well, number one, put the guillotine outside. Or if I'm the king, I'm making machines of death myself. And if this, if this court jester, I'd be going through court jesters like popcorn. Oh, yeah. Don't come up to my throne with some corny shit, bro. You'll get your fucking head sliced off. You know how hard it would be to find a court jester in my fucking kingdom? Anyhow. I mean, if you can't listen, this is why absolute power corrupts, corrupts absolutely. I'd be sitting in my throne like what? <sighs> Who's the uh, lieutenant, right? One of your knights. Get one of the knights over here. Say, hey, hey, rattle cans, come here. <sighs> chink, 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 chink. Do me a favor. Who got married today? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, bring his wife up here. <sighs> We're gonna have a good time tonight. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine? Sire, Sire, we'd all, the kingdom would like to congratulate, I don't know, what did they congratulate one of the serfs or something like that? For having a baby or something like that? I'd be like, oh yeah? That's great. Bring it down here tomorrow for fucking arrow practice. <laughs> what are you going to do? What do you think? You know, there was some real. Prick cocksucker kings out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, having a baby. Oh, my God. We were trying to have a kid for months. I didn't know what was going on. I, 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 I knew what was going on. We were so stressed out about it. She's like, oh, my God, I can't have a kid anymore. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, let me explain something to you right now. You get to a level of, of being stressed out that you can't... I want women to pay attention right now. You cannot stress about having a child. Because it does something to the hormones or something like that. And then you can have a child. Yeah.
in order to have a child, there has to be, you guys have to be so into it. There has to be love involved. Do you understand? Of course, we know there doesn't have to be love involved. But it helps. And you have to be relaxed. Okay? I heavily suggest anybody out there trying to have a kid, right? That's like, that's fucking like rabbits. Drink a little bit. Yeah, it helps. I remember she thought I was broken. I, I thought she was broken. Anyhow, they, she sends me to the doctor. We gotta, we gotta send you to the doctor for, to check your sperm. I'm like, what? Why me? What about you? Anyhow, she sends me to this doctor. I walk in the door and it's like a doctor's office, right? And I walk up to the desk. I'm like, I'm, I'm here for the, you know, I don't know, test. The guy hands me a cup. And he says, yes, right around there to the restroom. And I'm thinking to myself, the restroom? I think I was going to go over there. There was going to be like a nice jerk-off room. Maybe like a couple magazines or, uh, you know, VCR tape movies. So I go over to the bathroom door. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is like public bathroom. I go to open the door and it's locked. And I hear somebody there. Ah, ah, ah. So I'm like, oh boy, all right. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting there. I swear to God, I was waiting there for like maybe 10 minutes for this person to come out. All of a sudden, the door opens up. And it's like uh, this fucking Indian guy with a goddamn, uh, you know, with a turban on. So let me tell you something. I go in after this guy. I swear to God, this guy took the dump of his life in there. And not to mention... I don't think he showered in months. So it was a mixture of dump of your life and horrible BO. I don't, e I don't even know how to explain it to you. Now I go into this bathroom. Now I I'm looking around. It's a toilet, a filthy shitted up toilet, and a sink. And now I got to rub, rub one out in here? Let me tell you something. It's one of my proudest moments that I was able to do it in my life. And it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. And do you know I brought out that sample cup and I put it on the, the, the desk there to the, the receptionist. Not, it was a guy, number one. I remember it was a guy with like hairy forearms. I don't know why that stood out. Um... I plopped that, that cup down on the table and I said, hey, it's not my best performance. And he goes and he grabs it with no gloves on. I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm driving home and I'm like, if there's not low sperm count in that cup, I don't, then there's no such thing as low sperm count. Because, I mean, the, let's face it. It wasn't the uh, the best environment for this type of thing. Anyhow, I tested all right. I tested, I, that was the other great piece of news. I got the I got the news, it was like, it was like the Maury Povich show. I remember uh, getting the phone call and then doing a little dance around the house. It's not me. It's not me, baby. Go fix your cunt. Yeah, how about that one? You ever think about that? What are we in, the steakhouse again? <laughs> I don't know, listen. I don't know, guys. You go ahead, go ahead, have kids. That's great. That's great. There you go. Turn your, turn, your, turn your life into a living nightmare. My Christ Almighty. I had men all my life tell me, don't get married, don't have kids. Don't get married, don't have kids. Yeah, here we are. I had a bachelor pad. What are you kidding me? Non-stop party. <clears throat> Non-stop fucking party. What are you going to do? Uh, 
Ah, sip of coffee. All right, this one's coming from Peta, all the way from Japan land. Oh yeah. Wow, Tokyo. I have this image in my head of Japan and just like, just like going to Japan and having Japanese chicks crawl all over me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Vanilla envelope. Jeez, would you look at this? Oh, come on. <laughs> look at this. This is uh, like laminated. Jeez. My God. This is a professional, people. Do you understand that? There are levels to life. And when you get a manila envelope and then... and. And this beautiful, look at this slip cover here. Oh yeah. Oh, this guy, this guy is high class. This, this reeks of class. Here we go. Dear Bithead 1000, 1, wow, <clears throat> great way to start. Greetings from Tokyo, Japan. I recently discovered your show a few weeks ago when you posted your impressions and predictions for games which were going to get on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. That was quite possibly one of the funniest video game related videos I have ever seen, and I subscribed soon afterward. Thank you. Your show is now one of my favorites on YouTube, and I have since binge-watched binge, binge a large portion of your videos. We are close in age. I've been a gamer all my life. I still have the vast majority of my childhood games since the NES days. Wow. You're very fortunate. That's, that's a nice thing to be able to say. So the stories on your show really bring back a lot of great memories from my childhood, especially about the NES, TurboGrafx-16, and going to the arcades. In any event, I have never sent anything to anyone on YouTube before but as I watched your journey from the, your first video to where you are now I was quite inspired and as such I wanted to send some gifts to say thank you for the good times and entertainment Wow Wow I am the type of person who cannot send anything in condition less than I would keep for myself and my own personal gaming collection. I kind of got that idea by the way this letter was sent. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to stick my neck out and say that these items are wor a worthy tribute to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization and will be awarded a place in the office and vault. You better believe that, buddy. There are four items numbered one to four. Three of the four items are over 30 years old. So please be very careful when opening them. Please open them in numerical order. Boy, this guy's got it licked. I'll tell you right now. Listen, where I work, we have a very young manager. And... This guy is by the numbers, by the book. I mean, you don't know, straight laced. You, you can't even imagine. I don't want to go on with this uh, because it's going to... Yes. And uh, he wound up getting so frustrated that he demoted himself. I guess things weren't going the way he wanted them to. 
And he asked me if I could go out to his truck. I mean, we're, we're talking about this guy is like, you know, pants pulled up to here, belt buckled, shirt tucked in, hair slicked, you know, uh, very focused everywhere he goes, organized, clipboard, pen and paper, always in hand. You know the kind of type of guy we're dealing with? This is like a guy in his early 20s. My heart bled for this guy. I'm like, guy, don't you ever go home and like, you know, scratch your nuts in front of the air conditioner? <laughs> Seriously, bro. You know, pour a tall one and just like see where the night takes you. So we're walking outside and he's like, you know something? He goes, I've had it with this. I'm too young. He goes, it's time for me to have fun. I really need to break loose. And I'm like, you know what? That's great. You're right. So we're getting something out of his truck. He needed some help with it, right? He opens up the hatch on his fucking Subaru, right? He opens up the hatch. Number one, if if you come into my car, it looks like a fucking Taco Bell bomb went off. Do you understand? I mean, there's lettuce, there's shredded cheese everywhere. There's fucking sodas spilling over. It's disgusting. I'm embarrassed. If I got to give somebody a ride, I'm like, oh. And I got news for you. When people get in my car, I don't explain shit. I hate when you get into somebody's house or somebody's... And they're like, oh, I would have cleaned up, but it's not always like this. I've talked about this before. Yes, it is! And I'm certainly not going to sit there and lie to somebody when they get in my car. Because the car, my car looks like the last shit I took when you get inside. I mean, there's clothes wrinkled on the floor. Pieces of gum stuck everywhere. The headline is coming down. Fuck it. Deal with it. I'm giving you the ride, bitch. You can walk. Coffee cups. Oh, you name it. You name it. The windshield, you can't even see out of it. Anyhow. Uh, my car's like fucking Mad Max. Mad Max's car was cleaner than my car. Anyhow. So he pops the trunk of his... The hatch open. Okay. He's got the... Uh, first aid kit like this. Lined up with two straps around it. You know. Sit, you know. Uh, what? How do they say that? Uh... Dope. And anywhere. It's like, you know, cinched down. He's got the road flares lined up like this. He's got the little uh, triangle, safety triangle that you put out in front of your car if you're changing your tire with road flares. I'm like, he's got a little toolbox like this lined up. A jump start, the jump starter cables, I love, they were all wrapped and tied and braided and all. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, you know. Way to cut loose, buddy. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. I felt like taking everything and going... <laughs> My God, who lives like that? It, it was painful to see. I said, this guy lives a painful existence. Uh, what are we talking about? All right, here we go. You know, I'm getting to the point in my life where <laughs> to see a good a good packing job trips the bone of valve. It's true. That's how, that's how sad my life has become. Here we go. Package package number one. What, what is this? I hope this isn't 30 years old. Wow, what is this? Kit Kat? You've got to be kidding me. Have a break with Kit Kat. The elegant taste of sake wrapped in the gentle sweetness of white chocolate. Enjoy rich, satisfying flavor of sake. What the hell is sake? For God's sake. Japan's sake. Kit Kat's sake. 
Hang on a second. Yeah. I gotta know what this is. What is this, like sauce? Oh, do it, it. This is, this is an, this is outrageous. Kit, Kit Kat. What is going on here? I thought it was like a jar of sauce. It's white. These are white chocolate Kit Kats. Is this what you're telling me? Christ almighty. What goes on in the world? Honestly. Hold on. I feel like I should be passing a Geiger, a Geiger counter over this, huh? Yeah, I listen. I'm still not I'm still not off the ropes about Fukushima, about what happened over there. Wow, look at this. The white chocolate Kit Kat. What an interesting flavor. Oh, yeah. I'm moving to Japan. I'm out of here. Wow. Wow, what a whirlwind of flavors. That's not bad. Uh, that's not bad. Let me follow that up with a sip of coffee, huh? Wow. Listen. I'm down with spiking the insulin at 3 o'clock in the morning. Trust me. I'm down for it. Not bad. Oh, wow. 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 That one cleared the sinuses a little bit. This is something else. This is something else. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Wow, Peter. What a knockout hit out of the park, and what a treasure. What a treasure. It's life force, no? For the Famicom. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. You know, I don't ever think I've, I've seen a, a Famicom box in person. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Konami, 1987, baby. 1987. I have a love affair with Life Force. Anybody who watches the show knows that. And, uh, yep, yeah, after school, used to play Life Force nonstop, was able to beat it with one guy. It was either one or two, all right? So stop breaking my balls about it. Yep. Used to use the 30 life code, and then after a while, didn't need it anymore. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the greatest shooter on, on the Nintendo, as far as I'm concerned. game's a real treasure. The music, the graphics, the 
the gameplay, the ability to switch from horizontal to vertically scrolling shooter and have it be just as fun either way. Treasure of a game. And how exciting to have it just like this. And it will be displayed in a very special place, I promise you that. That's neat. That's really neat. Number three. Here we go. Oh boy. Look at this. Anybody? Anybody? Can anybody see what we're dealing with here? Oh. Oh yeah. Wow, this is really this is really uh, hitting the nostalgia button here. Sure is. It's Hyperdyne Sidearms. Hyperdyne Sidearms, and this is the Hue Card version. We have the CD version, but it's much sweeter to have the Hue Card version. This is an excellent addition to the PC Engine collection because I grew up with sidearms. Yeah, me and Georgie. Yep, Capcom, baby, 1989. That's right. That's right, well, I would go to Georgie's house, Georgie had sidearms, we'd play a little sidearms, then we'd play a little Dungeon Explorer. Very, 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 very nostalgic game for me. Yeah, this is great. Phew. Awesome. Georgie's father would play. Georgie's father was Colombian. He would join in and play and then curse like a sailor. <laughs> you ever hear a Spanish guy cursing an American? It's the best. It's the best. What is going on here? Very careful with this. Wow. Oh no. You did not. If this is what I think it is, oh my Christ. You know, somebody wrote me a comment. I like your show and everything like that, but could you uh, abstain from blaspheming? <laughs> I guess mentioning the Lord's name in vain. I'm like, 
What? Listen, guy, I love you to death, but you're out. I'm sorry. You're out. It's one of my favorite things to do. Don't you understand that? God damn it! What is this? Hang on a second. Oh, it's better than I even thought it was. It's even better, guys. Oh, this is better than I thought it was. Oh, I gotta be careful. Oh, look at this. Oh! R-Type iRim Game Music. Ah! Whoa, you can't be serious here. Oh, this is, this is... Are you kidding me? R type music. Second level. Oh my lord, look at this. It's R type, title coin, battle theme, boss theme, return and triumph, uh, continue, ba, za, ba, ba, ba. And then it's Load Runner, Mr. Helly. Oh yeah. Oh, Mr. Helly's on here? Oh my god. So yeah, it's R type. What is going on? Moon Patrol? Some of it's in Japanese. I don't know what's going on here. This is incredible. This is incredible. And we're working on getting a record player out there. Oh, you don't think I'm working on it? Yes. We're working on getting our own personalized record player out here. And I already have a receiver that I bought over the weekend at a garage sale. Okay, look at this baby right here. Oh yeah. You remember in the 90s, a Denon receiver? Oh, made in Japan. Yes, Denon. And when you say to yourself, well, what's, what's so special about this receiver? Well, number one, it was $5. And number two, it has a phono stage. Yeah, something you can't find on a modern receiver. So until we find something maybe a little older for in here, this will do for now. And it'll be dead reliable. Oh yeah. 
So all we need is a turntable and we got a pair of speakers. And let me tell you something right now. Then we will, we will bring this back in. We'll bring this back in and take a closer look. Oh yeah, I promise you that. Wow, Peter man, oof. This is intense. It's intense. Okay, good. Wow, Peter. Sip of coffee for Peter. Oh yes. Great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Last but not least, we have a package here coming to us from, you know it, Germany. Mm-hmm. I see the colored envelope and I already know. I already know we spent way too much money. I see, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, because this was probably ordered like a month ago. These things, these things take time to get to you. So we'll we'll find out what it is together. Sometimes I pull the game out and I'm like, I, well, I don't even remember ordering it. It's true. Old age. It's a lot of fun. Oh. Oh yeah, I remember ordering this a long time ago. And here it is. This is too good, baby. It's too good. Look at this, guys. Oh, yeah. It's Battle Greg. On the PS4. Oh. Oh. on the PS4. What more do you want? I hear the pr the, the price of my Battle Garega uh, plunging right now. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Fuck it, right? Everybody needs to play Battle Garega. Right? What a gorgeous game. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> done the right way. Oh, drawn beautifully. Oh, the graphics are gorgeous. Crane arms coming out from the side of the screen. Uh, just bullets flying everywhere. And my only gripe with Battle Garega is debris on the screen. Sometimes you blow things up and there's debris flying everywhere and, and it sort of gets confusing. And Battle Garega is a motherfucker. That's right. It's not easy. It's not easy, but that's okay. That's okay. If there was ever a game worth playing, it's this one right here. Oh, yeah, baby. This is great. Great stuff. Yep, what do we pay for this? Put a receipt in there. No, just a little card there. Yeah, man. I, I, I don't know what we paid for this. I, I'm going to say we paid maybe 30 something dollars for that. Probably. What are you going to say? No. What am I really going to let Battle Garega slip between my fingers? No, it ain't happening. Here we go. We'll play it on the PS4. I could let my fucking uh, Sega copy just rot in its little vault box there now. Yeah. Like, like the collector that I am.
So there we go. Guys, I don't have to tell you that you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With the 4K face! See you next time.